Hello, fellow traders. Steve Gans back. Um, I introduced myself to you yesterday in a first video, um, but I've been a stock and options trader for over 30 years. I've taught stock and options trading to hundreds and hundreds of students. Um, and I've been a fan of options strat for quite some time. I mean, five, six, seven years or so was when I discovered it. And um, I'm really excited to uh, be basically a contributor for Option Strat and to start sharing some trading concepts and ideas with you. Uh, everything I share is for educational purposes and designed to help you learn more about options trading as well as the use of Option Strat. So a trade that I want to look at here today is what's called an earnings trade. And it's an earnings trade on a company called Chewy. So those of you, if you don't know, uh, Chewy is kind of like an Amazon, maybe for the pet world, where you can buy all your pet products from pet foods to chew bones to cat toys to you name it. So uh, Chewy announces earnings. If we look on my uh, Thinkorswim platform here, we can see that Chewy announces earnings tomorrow, March 22nd, after the market close. So today's March 21st, and I'm putting this together tonight so that it can be available first thing tomorrow morning for people to model up and study. So anyhow, what I'm looking at from a technical analysis standpoint is I can see that in the past, Chewy has kind of come up into this you know, $45, $46 range, and it usually tends to pull back from in that general area. So again, from a technical analysis point, if Chewy were to gap up after earnings, so on Thursday morning, um, I, I wouldn't under normal circumstances expect it to go much beyond this 45 mark. Uh, likewise, there's been support in this, you know, 35 range. So I wouldn't expect it to go much below the 34, 35 range. Now, keep in mind that this is using technical analysis and when you get into what's called a binary event like earnings, anything can happen. They can announce some fabulous news that puts this thing all the way up to 55 or some horrible news that puts it all the way down to 25. That's why anytime someone gets in a trade, especially a trade around earnings, it's really important to fully understand your risk in a trade. So what I'd like to do now is let's take a look at this trade in Option Strat. So again, this is a trade on Chewy. So what I've done is I've come in and I've modeled up specifically a trade right around where Chewy is trading. So it's trading uh, right around the, the $40 mark, $39.85 is where it closed out today. Um, so what I am looking to do is I'm looking to sell the $40 put that expires this Friday, and then I'm going to buy the $40 put that doesn't expire until the following week. So this is what's called a calendar, or some people call it a time spread, because there's time between these two options. Uh, it's also often called a horizontal spread because, again, we're looking at time where in a normal option, we're looking at trading the same expirations, but there's a difference in our strikes. So they call that a vertical spread. So again, different names for kind of the same thing. So what's important to look at, though, when we look at this particular trade, if we put uh, this trade on, we're going to have a maximum risk of approximately $42 per calendar, okay? So um, uh, it's going, basically we're gonna spend uh, $4, or excuse me, 42 cents roughly to put on this trade. Now, how that gets arrived at, let me change this. Right now this is all to percent over here. Let me change this to P&L. So how that's gonna happen is let's look at the option we're gonna sell. So if we sell this 40 strike option, we're going to sell that for $2.13, okay? So that's going to be a credit to us. And then the option that we buy, we're going to have to buy at $2.52. So the variance between those two is what gives us this amount. That's how much we're going to have to pay, and that will then be our maximum risk in this trade. So what do we want to have happen in this trade? Well, let's dial this back 
to an entry, and again, let's just say that today was our entry day. It wasn't, but if today was my entry day on this, I'm going to be basically break even on the trade, and I will be down a few bucks in commissions. Then as time marches forward on this trade, our T0 line here lifts up and it brings profitability into this trade. Now that happens a couple of different ways. That happens over time with options as some options lose their value as time marches forward. And the other way this can happen is through volatility. So let's just dial this back. Let's just say right now volatility is very, very high, particularly on these front strike options, the ones that are most uh, um, the closest ones to when they announce earnings. So again, earnings are announced Wednesday night after the close. These options expire this coming Friday. So most people that are going to buy options around an earnings report are going to do it in the closest expiration. That tends to drive those options prices higher. And if we are a seller of these, that's a good thing for us. We're getting more money because of the fear or greed that is out there in the market. Now, what happens is right after those earnings get announced, so Thursday morning, volatility is going to drop considerably. When that volatility drops, you can see that my tent shrinks up here, but also we're going to be out on Thursday then. So, you know, Thursday sometime during the day, this is going to mound up considerably. And if the price of the underlying stock is still in our general tent range, we will develop some nice profitability in a very short amount of time. So that's the goal or the objective here for me is that my underlying is not going to move much based on earnings. It might bounce around a little bit, but my, my intent or my hope or my plan is that it's not going to move around too much. And then come Thursday morning when it opens, this green line is going to be significantly higher up here and bring me in some decent profit. So if I'm going to pay 42 cents to get into this options trade, or a total of $42.30 uh, because of course each options contract represents 100 shares of stock. So if I'm going to pay that, my intent is going to have an order out there to sell out of that on Thursday morning. Now let me just change this to percent. And from a percent standpoint, let's just, maybe I'm looking to, uh, you know, hopefully get somewhere in the neighborhood of 50% uh, profit, somewhere around that general range. So I would go ahead and just put an order to sell my entire calendar here uh, at whatever price point I'm after above my $42.30. So the key here is that we do need to be in this general range. If we're not, if something uh, gets announced that the world does not like, uh, this price can drop down to $34 and we are going to take a 100% loss on this trade. Again, 100% in this case would be our roughly $42 that I'm going to pay to enter this. Or the, other, the opposite could happen. This thing could rip up all the way up here and then I'm going to be down $42 to the upside in this trade. So I need to understand that going in. And the nice thing, again, about Option Strat is it allows me to model all of the different scenarios that I could potentially imagine coming out in this trade. So uh, this is a trade that uh, I'm probably going to consider putting on on Wednesday. I'll look at the pricing again uh, come Wednesday morning. And um, uh, if you haven't traded calendars before, or even if you have, always paper trade things first. Make sure you've got a full, complete understanding of each and every type of trade you might enter. And make sure you use Option Strat to come in and model all the scenarios that could happen. Volatility could go up considerably. Volatility could drop considerably. Um, you know, so it's really important to look at all of those different things anytime somebody considers entering a trade. So hopefully this was helpful. And again, I look forward to sharing many more concepts and ideas with you so we can all learn from these in the future. So thank you again.